Now this stick has been sitting out here for several weeks. I just left it out on my back deck so it would stay moist and the lichen wouldn't dry out so it would still be pretty fresh. And that's why it's nice and soft coming out, or coming off, which is great. Isn't that beautiful? I just love the look of that. Now this is quite a bit of lichen. Um, some of it is quite old and it was, I forget where I had it, but it did dry out. And that's why so much of this um, looks more brown. Actually, you can start to see the orangey color come out of it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and still use that. The fresher stuff that you saw me processing earlier is in the bottom and it's greener, but uh, the orange color, of course, is what we're going to end up with. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about the bark because I've tried to dye with bark before and it's very difficult to get uh, pigment out of bark, in my opinion. That's with my experience anyway. So I'm not really that worried about the bark impacting the color of the dye, of the lichen dye. And if it does, I won't mind. Whatever it turns out with, I'm fine. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put water in this and uh, soak this and soak some fiber. And um, I think I'll do this today. Now that was quite a bit of dye material. So I'm putting a good bit of water, as you see, um, so that the water will have good movement all around the lichen as I heat it. Now I'm gonna put this, um, as, as usual, I'm gonna put it on a, a low heat. Sometimes you can bring something up almost to a boil and then back it off. But um, I prefer a low heat. I think lichen is so fun. Is that not a whimsical plant? Well, it's not a plant, but you know what I mean. Just so cute. Good morning, everybody. Such a nice morning here. Well, while that um, fiber is soaking in the sink, and that is fiber that I've previously tried to dye with some mushrooms unsuccessfully. As you see, it's still totally white, but it's already mordanted, so I could just stick it in some water. And as the lichen is simmering on the stove, I'm gonna sit here and chat with you and show you these slippers, oh dear. So I'm, I'm going to go visit my mother uh, this summer, and I would love to take her old slippers back to her. And they're in a sorry state. I tried. I, I did um, cut up my Franken slipper. If you remember the Franken slipper, it's the one that the first one I made that was so long, I had to actually cut part of it out and stitch it, and it looked like Frankenstein. So um, anyway, I tried to do this on my machine. I put a little section. It looks a lot like this one. This is part of the Franken slipper. Just a little kind of circle-ish piece in the heel. And then I tried to slip this underneath on my sewing machine and um, use a zigzag stitch to attach it. And I didn't get very far. Anyway, I really did a number on my sewing machine. Um, I had it set on the zigzag and this stuff is so thick and there were two layers of it that it pushed my sewing machine needle over and it got trapped between the presser the plate and the foot, the foot, uh, the feed dog. It was stuck in there. So I had to uh, unscrew the foot and take it off. And I had to um, get some pliers and pull and take the needle out, obviously, of the machine and pull the needle out. It was a mess. So I think from now on, I'm just going to do this by hand. I think it'll take less time than fighting with my machine because I think it would be a fight. Uh, and whether this will be comfortable to walk on afterward with this in there. I just don't know. Um, if it's not, then I'm just going to give up on trying to squeeze more life out of these slippers after they get holes in them, and I'll just make new ones. Um, but I must say, at this point, I feel like having to make a new pair of slippers every year. I don't know about that. 
Now, I do know people who these slippers last longer, but it's because they're very careful when they wear them and how long they wear them. And But I'm home all day, and so I wear mine all day long, and they don't last more than, you know, six months. So I'm going to get out my little needle and thread, and I'm going to be stitching on this, and I'll show you um, what I think of it when I get done. And I'll bring you back in a minute when I've seen what I can do with this. After a couple of hours of simmering and steaming on the stove, that's the color of my dye bath water with the lichen in it. Now I want to make a correction because I went back and watched my old video on my best lichen dye so far. And um, it wasn't fresh lichen that gave me that dark color, it was old lichen. So I have some pretty old lichen in here. We'll see what happens. And I'm going to add vinegar to it, about a quarter cup of vinegar to see if I can get it, um, get that pH adjusted. Ooh. Look at the color of that lichen. It's quite dark brown. I think it's released all of its drops some in there. Now this um, lichen bath soaked for, boy, I don't know, maybe three or four hours. I think I probably started around seven or eight and it's 11.05 now. And my water has been soaking, uh, my, my wool has been soaking just in water also all that time. And then toward the end, I put it in some warm water so it wouldn't be shocked when I put it in here. And I've got this on low, very the lowest setting on the stove. And I'm just going to let it sit there for quite a while. Well, it's worked. I didn't realize that the hole in the bottom is really on the ball of her foot here, um, the one that's toward the front. And so, yeah, that's where that pad is. And I had to go back in and cut some of that pad off because there was too much of it. Don't want too much bulk. Um, I was able to get the slipper over my foot, amazingly. Now, on the front here, I did some back and forth stitching, pulling the broken knit stitches together. And that kind of did a good job. Um, I might need to go back and do some of that here. I tried to attach them down, but I think I'd like to pull them together. We'll see. But um, I think just as a, a repair, that's not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah, this one looks a lot better than this one. This time I decided to add a little paint. Here are some of those place names I was talking about. There's a Smith Creek in Oriental, lots of pecans in the county. There's a Hodges Street, Toucan is a restaurant, Link is a lane, The Bean is a coffee shop, 
I've introduced Mr. Pittman to you before. Sadly, no. No longer among us. Kershaw is a creek and a road. Bond is a wonderful town name. John Bond was one of our founders, and his wife is still here. Dragon, of course, goes with Oriental. The Piglet is a little grocery store. It's called the Piggly Wiggly, but we just call it the Piglet. Whitaker is the name of a creek and a road. <laughs> River Dunes is a very swanky um, neighborhood uh, that's outside of Oriental, but inside the town limits so they could get uh, town water and sewer. I think that's about it. I'm enjoying these so much. Uh, they may not sell, but I may just keep on doing them because I love doing them. Anyway, I've done another one of those that I actually painted a little bit. They are so much fun to draw. Maybe another time I'll get the camera at a better angle, angle where you can actually see what I'm doing. But if you want to learn how to draw these little kind of Middle Earth fantasy maps, there's lots of wonderful tutorials on YouTube. You don't have to watch mine, but um, oh, they're just so cute. And if you have a, a grandson or a nephew or a child who uh, loves pirates and pirate ships and treasure and fantasy stuff, they would love a map like this. Um, and the more detailed you make it, the funner it is. A really gorgeous color from that lichen. Isn't it wonderful? Now my sloppy pouring of my dye bath meant that I got some VM in there. I should also add that this is Romney fleece that I bought from the Woolery. I hope you enjoyed that process. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs>